For this tattoo, I'm going to be using this photo of Heath Ledger as the Joker from Batman, and I'm going to be covering this old tattoo. Here goes. Hey guys, hope you're doing well. So the cover up in this tattoo was actually over and done with really quickly, to be honest. As you can see, it's pretty small in relation to the whole design that we're working on and it's conveniently at the bottom. So like I've always said before, I start at the bottom and work my way up. But nevertheless, I figured it would be a good opportunity to talk about my thought process for more of the preparation when it comes to doing a cover up, not so much the actual tattooing. That's the easy part. You know, you don't change the way you tattoo, you still do the same amount of pressure, everything like that. It's just more what's important with doing a cover up is actually the preparation. So. Firstly, how dark is the tattoo? It's kind of an obvious one. If it's really, really dark, then the only thing that I'm gonna be able to layer over the top of it is a color that's equally as dark, if not darker. So if we have a solid black tattoo, I'm gonna to need to use a lot of solid black in my new design in that exact spot where the old tattoo is to ensure that it's gonna be completely hidden. If we have a really old tattoo, like in this case, it was over 30 years old. It was really faded, really blown out. All of the color hadn't hurled over hadn't held over the years. So it was a lot easier for me to work over it with some dark greens and some blues as well. And that brings me on to my next point, it's size and location. So in this case, the tattoo that we was covering was pretty small in relation to the whole forearm, which we were working on. It's tucked away at the bottom, just off slightly to the left. So that's perfect for this design. It means I can use the blazer of the Joker just to hide the old tattoo. And then the portrait is gonna be on a fresh canvas and it's gonna be unaffected by anything un underneath. And all of the light tones that I've got that I need in the portrait, cause it's, there's a lot of white face paint for, on the Joker. It's all gonna be unaffected and I'm gonna see everything clearly. I'll leave another example on the screen here quickly. As you can see, we've got a really dark tattoo, something that hasn't faded at all. It's really not that old. I think it was only maybe one or two years before she wanted it covered up. But luckily, because of its position in relation to the whole forearm, I was able to use solid black at the bottom of my design and then put all the focus on the bright colors in the portrait further up. That way your eye is being taken away from where the cover up is and onto like a new area where you can get lots of nice detail and have an awesome new tattoo. So third one would be, how open is the client to your ideas? And for me, that's probably the most important one is making sure that I've got a, as much freedom as I can to make the design and ensure that I can do my job as best as I can, especially for a cover up that because it's really important that it's covered. You know, you don't want to do something that's not the best idea for what the situation is. And then once the tattoo is healed, you can still see the old tattoo and then you've got two tattoos sort of blurred into one and it just is an absolute mess. Often with clients ideas, no disrespect to clients, but we're the professional, of course. So it's highly likely that the idea that they've got isn't going to be the best idea for a cover up. So my suggestion is always what's more important to you, this idea that you have or getting the tattoo covered. If it's the idea, then let's just work on a different body part. If it's getting the tattoo covered, then let's just put our heads together and really nail this. So this was as far as I got on the first day, did quite a long day, but unfortunately his skin was just really dry, quite difficult. Um, it was slow to saturate, but you know, sometimes you run into days like this, there's not much you can do really, other than just do your best, it's not the end of the world. He was back after a few weeks and we cracked on. And lastly, it would just be the design. So the design process is gonna be a combination, of all the things I've spoke about already. It's gonna be taking into consideration how dark it is, the size, location, and then knowing my limitations, how much freedom I have in the design process. So this part is generally, I guess the smoothest part once everything's been spoken about and you know exactly what you're doing. And then it's just a matter of getting it done, you know? And then on the day you get started and that's it, you just do what you always do. And hopefully, hopefully everything works out, assuming you've prepared, then it will all be fine. So yeah, that's my basic thought process for when I'm going about doing a cover up. Um, like I said, I don't have tons of experience with cover ups. I've done a handful in the few years that I've been tattooing professionally, um, after my apprenticeship that is. Um, I know there's some guys out there like Camille, Camille's probably the, the biggest name that I can think of. He, he even brands himself as the cover up God. 
And uh, that guy knows something that I don't know, that's for sure. He knows something that a lot of people don't know when it comes to cover-ups. Um, he does some crazy, crazy stuff. But yeah, like I said, I thought this would be a good opportunity just to talk about it whilst I'm, whilst I'm doing the time-lapse. Let me know what kind of things you do want me to talk about. Because I've only got a handful of subscribers, you know, it's hard to judge who my audience is. I, I can't, I don't know if it's, if you guys are just tattoo collectors, if you're just interested in tattoos, or you're tattoo artists looking for tips and tricks. Let me know in the comments, let me know, let me know what you do, who you are, you know, why you're, why you're watching. Um, and if you do have any questions about, about tattooing, it doesn't have to be technical, it can be just general questions, you know, how I got into tattooing or anything like that just leave a leave a comment and then I can answer it in a in a future video I think that would be a good little series to do where I post a video I'm gonna be posting every week anyway time lapses of my work so you can just leave a comment and then the following week I can get back to some and I think it'd just be a better way to get really nice and in depth and get some good get some good talking going on um, and build a little community so thanks for watching guys I hope you've enjoyed my little rant and I haven't waffled away too much if you haven't already, please do subscribe and I'll leave you with the next few seconds of next few seconds of the video and then show you the final product at the end. Thanks for watching. Bye guys.